okay, a promise is a promise. I wanted to honor it. I said we were going to talk about it, right? So when we talk about cohesion, remember we talk about a system that involves reference, substitution, ellipsis, conjunction, and lexical cohesion. Within reference, we have pronouns, nominative pronouns, demonstrative pronouns. It is a nominative pronoun, and it is actually very rich, right? Um, very meaningful. Remember that when we talk about cohesion, we talk about two elements that relate, right? Or one element that um, makes us go in a certain direction to find something, to retrieve something, right? And this is what it does all the time. Um, I am going to follow some notes that appear in a um, Word document on Dropbox that is called uh, Cohesion and It, right? This is the last page and it gives you five uses for it, right? The pronoun it. In these notes, I uh, give you also reference to Swan 446 to 447. These are the entries from Swan that discuss the same topic. This is a bit of a summary from there. So we have the first one, the anaphoric it, the one you know, right? Where's the horse? It is in the stable. No problem um, deciding what it is. But actually, sometimes in a text, it might be difficult to spot. But this is the one we call anaphoric. And we, you can also uh, anticipate a whole sentence, as in you saved my life. I shall never forget it, right? So it refers back to you saved my life. Now, the next entry is the one we call anticipatory it. This is the British pronunciation. Americans will go anticipatory normally, right? Uh, we also call it expletive it or dummy it because actually it seems not to mean anything. It, it seems just to... to uh, have the role of a dummy, right? Something you put in place just to take up space. Now, uh, this anticipatory it uh, comes in three uh, structures. It may anticipate a to infinitive, as in it is wrong to lie, an ing form, as in it is nice seeing you again, and a that clause, a noun clause, uh, it is a pity that you can come. Mostly it will be that, right? There may be something else. You will find other examples um, from Swan. But uh, these are the three main, not the three main, the three uh, structures that are anticipated by the anticipatory it. Even Swan mentions these two examples. It's amazing the way she treats them. It's admirable her emotion. Now, these phrases are considered in most contexts substandard, right? They are not uh, standard English, and this is because it does not anticipate a noun phrase, right? Swan says these are informal. Uh, he cites some um, random examples. Actually, the ones, are, the ones he uses are, it is amazing the way they work. It is strange the way you know what I am thinking. It's wonderful enthusiasm. So, um, well, um, for most, this, this would be uh, substandard, right? And uh, I strongly recommend that you use the anticipatory it for two infinitives, ing form, and noun clauses. The next category is the unspecified it. So it is unspecific. Actually, we, we give it uh, many names, but they are um, all very similar, right? This is just a... Um, a sort of uh, taxonomizing something to, to give us some uh, uh, context, right? Here, under the unspecified it, we find weather it, it is cold, time it, it is four o'clock, space it, it's a long way to San Francisco, nothing uh, unusual here. The one that is really interesting is this one, which we call the um, idiomatic it, right? The idiomatic it is the one you find in idiomatic expressions. And the reason why we refer to this as uh, it, this as idiomatic it is because uh, it, um, it doesn't refer to anything in particular, but rather to um, something, a, a sort of obscure meaning, right? And here we have, uh, for example, you found first, if you're found out, you'll catch it. To catch it in British English, American English will be catch hell or get it, means to be punished. So when I say, if your dad finds out, you'll really catch it, this means 
you will pay for it by being punished, right? No vas a agarrar nada, right? Um, no es que te va a agarrar, sino que te va, la vas a ligar, en realidad. Usually, this uh, is a reference to physical punishment, right? Now, um, if you go camping, you'll have to rough it, right? This one we'll find under the rough. Uh, rough it, it means to live in a way that is not comfortable. So we can sleep on the beach. I don't mind, mind roughing it, right? Uh, so being uncomfortable for some time. Uh, then you have here on the list, take it as red. She's got it. What does she have? What is this it? Maybe she's got uh, probably... Uh, sex appeal and she's attractive who knows what that could be um and uh the next one we're going to see is have because actually have has um has many uh combinations right and you'll find um i have it rumor has it uh an idiom meaning well there's a rumor about something, right? Um, to have it in for somebody, right? Which is not to like somebody. To have it in for someone, uh, sorry, um, to have it in you, to have the, the, the capability of doing something. So um, uh, everyone, think, everyone thinks she has it in him to produce a literary classic and to have it off, which is uh, sexual, right? To have sex with somebody. Um, there are more here uh, that I have listed. You've got it made. I love this one because um, I couldn't find this one easily on Oxford. Uh, be very careful because no es estás hecho. You've got it made means you're sure of success. Um, actually, it is here somewhere. I don't know. No, I didn't. I didn't put it. Um, and we are. Uh, we have another one that says. They want to stick it to the wealthy, meaning to make the wealthy uh, uh, suffer for something, to show it to them. Um, we've never had it better. We've, possibly this means we've never had a better time. Yes, um, you either have it or you don't, very much like she's got it. Uh, what we're trying to say is as, that this it, idiomatic it, uh, needs to be explained. Yes, you need to expand the idea of what it means. Because when I say, um, for example, I'll rough it, um, well, there are many ways of roughing it, right? Possibly this means, I don't know, sleeping on the floor, right? Uh, not even uh, uh, with a sleeping bag, but we don't know, right? Uh, it may refer to the kind of food you're going to eat or, or the fact that there, there won't be a toilet, who knows? Uh, but whenever we come across this uh, idiomatic it, we need to expand it because the context will tell us. At least it will guide us. The last category um, within unspecified it is the unknown person, right? When you say someone entered the room, it was a burglar. Um, we don't say he uh, because we don't know, right? It is unspecified. So uh, this is the case when we use it instead of he or she. The next category is emphatic it, right? This is also known um, as the cleft sentence, right? And in Son, you will find it under cat, uh, entries 130 and 31. Um, cleft it, cleft means divided into two, right? We also have uh, a cleft palate, right? Uh, from the verb to cleave. Now, um, Let's not get sidetracked. Uh, the typical sentences here are, it was his mother who said that. It was uh, the dog that did it. It was, um, uh, I don't know, the teacher who told us to do this. Now, mostly you see uh, a noun phrase after it, but you may have, for example, a prepositional uh, phrase as in, it was in the kitchen that they were talking, right? It was on my birthday that you called me a liar. So this can vary a little bit and Swan will give you more examples. So this is the emphatic it. So basically what we're trying to say is that the whole sentence is emphatic. It doesn't have a specific meaning. And um, so we, we don't have to retrieve the meaning for it, but for the whole clause, right? And if we're thinking of translating, we're thinking of translating emphasis, not it. Even if we have a similar structure, it may not work in Spanish, right? 
Finally, we also have the objective it, right? And for this, uh, there here are some very useful structures that uh, typically um, give trouble to Spanish speakers. I would appreciate it or prefer it if you did something, as it is here, if you left. So when I say I would appreciate it, what follows if if you left? The verb find, another, another um, uh, difficult verb. I find it interesting that you like music. Rumor has it, we've seen it, that you have a new job. He made it a problem to walk. I thought it strange that she should be angry. Take it, sorry, I take it that you're leaving. We owe it to society to make this a better place and I, I would love it if you could help me. Notice all of these are, as the title says, ob uh, objective uses of it. Um, and once again, they need to be expanded, but they're very much like the anticipatory it in that this is, it is merited by the structure, right? Um, so I suggest you go to Swan for more examples. Uh, and remember that whenever we come across any it in a text, we will need to work it out, work out um, which type of it uh, we have encountered. Is it anaphoric? Is it emphatic? Is it anticipatory? Is it unspecified? Whatever. Okay. Thank you. That's all.